Hi, I'm Trang Tran, overtime lawyer. I represent a lot of restaurant employees and there are two common violations that uh, I see in restaurants. One is kitchen workers. Uh, they treat cooks and people that work in the kitchen as exempt employees. They get paid a salary or um, they get paid a day rate and they don't get paid overtime. So kitchen employees who are paid a salary, a fixed rate, uh, without any overtime is a common violation. Number two are tipped employees. Tipped employees who are paid $2.13 an hour instead of the minimum wage of $7.25 are subject to a lot of uh, violations based on their tips being retained. When a restaurant decides to pay a tipped employee $2.13 an hour instead of $7.25, they have to make up that difference in tips. That tip would be $5.12 an hour. The restaurant has to make sure that the wait staff are getting enough tips each day so that they're making at least $5.12 an hour. Because when you add the $5.12 of tip to the $2.13, you get $7.25. So if they don't get enough tips, uh, the restaurant has to make it up. The other violation that we see a lot is that the restaurant keeps the tip employees' tips. I know that's a mouthful, but um, you can call them waiters or wait staff if that makes it easy. And it sure is for me. So when a restaurant maintains uh, a tip pool or decides to pay uh, wait staff two thirteen an hour, uh, they have a problem if they then charge for breakages, if they charge wait staff and bartenders for walkouts, if they charge uh, wait staff and bartenders uh, for misorders, if there's shortage in the drawer at the end of the night or the end of the shift and they charge a tip employee that um, to make it up, then they're actually taking tips from the wait staff or the bartenders and they're keeping it. Uh, one other way that we see uh, a tip violation is when the restaurant decides to withhold a certain amount of tips and gives it to the bartenders who are slash managers or just giving it to the managers or keeping the tip outright. So for example, if you have a large event um, where a lot of tips were generated, maybe a banquet or maybe a large party and this um, large amount of tips being generated and the restaurant for some reason maintains or keeps some of that tip and the wait staff that worked that particular event didn't get all their tips, you have a, a tip violation. So what happens when you have a tip violation? Well, when you have a tip violation, you voided all the tip credit. Remember when I told you about the $5.12 an hour? Well, then retroactively you go back and you figure out uh, all the hours that the waiters had worked at uh, $2.13 an hour, the restaurant has to go back and make up that difference and pays the $5.12 an hour back. If they maintain this policy throughout the entire time the wait staff or the tip employee worked there, they have to pay that $5.12 delta for the entire time period. So it adds up. I mean, if you're working uh, 40 hours a week, and you're getting a back pay of $5.12 for 40 hours a week for each week that you work there at that restaurant or bar, uh, it adds up. And um, don't forget, um, if you have to file a lawsuit, it's mandatory double damages. Uh, it's called liquidated damages, but all you need to know is it's double. So in summary, uh, wait staff, bartenders, tipped employees do not have to pay for uniform, shortages, misorder, walkouts, 
loss or shortages in the drawer at the end of the shift. Uh, or And they absolutely cannot share the tips with non-tipped employees, such as a supervisor or a boss or the owner, or even the kitchen workers. Because um, at the end of the day, the kitchen workers may have cooked the food, prepared it, but they were not the one that served the customers. And so the individuals that serve the customers are the ones that are entitled to tips. So that could include a hostess, a bartender, a waiter, and a busboy who helps clean the, um, the table. If you have any questions about tips or whether or not you're being paid correctly as a tipped employee, give us a call.